And joining us now, a man that a lot of people were excited about when he came back to coach the Rangers pitchers as pitching coach Mike Maddox joins you now on 105.3 The Fan. And a good afternoon to you, sir. How the heck are you? Hey, doing great, guys. Uh, it's nice to have a roof over here. We're indoors instead of out there in that soupy weather right now. So, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my my goodness. I, I know you, you, you perhaps more than anybody can appreciate that. How much nicer is it for your guys now with this uh, AC in here, buddy? Um, you know what? Uh, when that summer heats up, we always used it in the past as a home field advantage, but um, we were big on IVs back then. Now there's no need for it, and I think that um, everybody's going to stay fresh longer. It's a... Uh, I think while it was a home field advantage, it now becomes a season-long advantage for the Texas Rangers. Oh, yeah, keep everybody fresh. Well, I, I tell you what, it it's a season-long advantage ha having you, uh, and I just want to thank you for coming back on behalf of Rangers fans and congratulate you for all the success you've had already. Are things going according to your plan, sir? Well, so far, so good. You look at the top of the standings, there the Rangers are, so that's what we signed up for. We're going to continue to push and play uh, both sides of the ball and keep putting up runs and firing up zeros. That's kind of our game plan going in. What, what is the, the Mike Maddox uh, book or, or, or your game plan, so to speak, when it comes to trying to optimize pitchers? What's in your game plan when you step into a new situation? Number one is that those pitchers pitch to their strengths. And number two, we pitch ahead in the count, uh, grab strike one, um, keep the ball in front of the outfielders and um, make the batters earn it. And, more importantly, uh, even though we're on a defense, you could say we're, we're playing offense when we have the ball. So that's a big thing. We got to stay on the attack, and you know we hold the score down, let our lumber come through. Uh, good things happen that way. So that's kind of the onus on the starting pitchers to go out there and hold the fort. Next thing you know, we're going to have a sizable lead. Hand it over to the bullpen, let them finish it up. Certainly a buzz and a lot of excitement for tonight's pitching matchup. Getting to work with Nathan Evaldi, what stood out to you about him and this career year he's really having? Man, he's been fantastic. Uh, he's a guy in the past that I've seen pitch uh, more on video than live. And uh, I always tried to like pair, you know, the pitchers that were on the staff and try how they, how they would cat and mouse hitters. And Nathan Ebaldi would pop up. I would just skim right through him. I said, you know, because our guys don't have that kind of stuff. You know, they, they don't have what he brings to the table. So to, to witness this guy every five days and his work ethic and his dedication to his craft has been more impressive than his stuff. And then he goes out there and produces like he does. It's no surprise. I mean, he's a consummate pro that um, he's been carrying the heavy load for us. Hey, Mike, uh, I was a former NFL scout, and I, I, I you know, studied video all my life. And you, know, you talked about that, and, you know, and, and you've seen him. How far back is your library on you? Can you show a young pitcher, like, okay, here's a guy I want you to look at. How far back can you go in that library of yours? Well, it's amazing um, how, you know, <laughs> I hate to say it, but been around a long time. So, you sure. know, all the way back to the 80s, you know, where you still find these guys that compare, you know, the way one guy did it. Now, of course, uh, go try to find video on a, a Steve Carlton or find video on right. Tom Seaver and those guys. It's, you know, that's the, in the archives. But, you know, you got to go back to the earlier two decades, you know, where we do have video and we got YouTube stuff and. I guess uh, since the internet came out, that's how far back you can go. Well, I go back quite a ways myself, Mike. Uh, I do remember opening up several packs of, of baseball cards that would have a Mike Maddox in it. <laughs> um, and, you know, so I, I can definitely appreciate how things have changed in sports over the years. But from your perspective, how much has pitching changed? H how different is the game that you're teaching compared to the game that you played? I think what I really preach is the grassroots of the game, and it's the way that um, – Everybody has been doing it for 100 years, and that's command the fastball and change speeds. That hadn't changed, you know. Now we have all this data information that tells us, um, you know, why the ball moves and how much it moves and things like that. And, you know, we always went back in the past. If you made your pitches, the hitters would let you know if your stuff's any good. And we kind of went sure. from there, and that's kind of what I try to bring back. Um, you know, people say, well, is this pitch very good? And I say, well, throw it, and the hitter will let you know. Hmm. Try to keep Coach, it simple. How, how how do you how do you embrace adversity at a time where it feels like this this season's been really really special and you've done so much of it without Degrom so there's really been adversity this whole season but now you start to some guys are missing time and you're having to shuffle things around calling guys up how do you embrace that and, and still try and, and power through uh, for what is already a really really good season? Well, I, I think it's great. You know, when you're without a Corey Seager, 
All right, all of a sudden, here comes Duran steps up and does what he does. Um, DeGrom goes down, Dunning steps up and, you know, did a great, has done a great job and is doing a great job. I think there's a 25 or 26 man roster right now and it involves all 26 guys plus another 10 that you're going to be calling up over the course of the season. So it shows the depth in your organization. But I think when you have adversity or you have a shortage of a player or players, I think uh, it really creates a team chemistry and bonds everybody together and puts everybody on a common, a common, um, a common scheme of you know what we play as Boach would say we play as one and um, that personifies what we do. Rangers pitching coach Mike Maddox with us in the G-Bag Nation and coach sometimes I wish if I was having a bad day I could get a mound visit from you you just seem like you're always saying the right thing and putting your pitchers at ease can you take us inside maybe a typical mound visit and what's going on in those conversations? Uh. Heck, they're all so different. They're not rehearsed, I tell you that. It just goes out there and you speak from the heart. I think um, one of the big things is um, you get inside the, the pitcher's soul. And, um, you know, we've all been out there, but I try to get close to them and, hey, this is what we're going to do. There's no situation that is life-threatening. It's, it's still a game. So let's go out and, hey, let's do this. You know, the, you know sometimes it's the, you know, the best thing about this situation is getting out of it and here's how we're going to get out of it and really try to be positive and say hey we do this this and this and be ready for the ball back to you you know it might going to be a double play right here so just try to tee up a positive ending before they've ever thrown a pitch yeah mike when you you're talking about having to work with what you have and then uh, maybe a surplus of other pitchers you know how is it one of those things that like every day do you go back and you get a, a, a report on what's going on in the minor league system, or is this stuff that you just your own experience of what you guys went through with training camp and those types of things? How do you how do you navigate not only keeping tabs on your staff, but what's going on with those extra pitchers that you were talking about? We have a basically our own website where everybody puts in the information. There's actual minor league games are on video or individual players are on video so um, you can go and watch it you can actually watch it and we do that and in constant communication with the minor league coaches about what guys are working on and who's next in line things like that so we do have a good uh, communication highway between us and I think that's healthy for the organization in a hypothetical trade conversation with uh, that involved a pitcher how involved would you be in those conversations and lead up to a potential trade uh, I would not be involved at the trading table, that's for sure. Um, it would be <laughs> on the peripheral about what do you think about this guy, what do you think about that guy, and I would give my opinion. But when it comes down to it, that's all uh, well above my pay grade. And, you know, those are the guys with the big offices upstairs. Take us back to uh, 12, 13 years, Mike. What are your favorite memories of the World Series runs you guys made? Oh, man. It's all utopic, you know. It's all fun. I think it was uh, – probably the most fun was the chemistry of the team and the fun that the guys had day in and day out we never really felt any pressure like to win because uh, we knew we were going to win and I just thought that was the uh, culture that Ron Washington had set you know that we come here we do what the game tells us to do and and we did that and good things always happened we had good players we had good pitchers and everybody played loose and everybody had fun while we were playing and you could you could walk in the clubhouse you wouldn't know if we were in the middle of a 10 game win streak or a seven game lose streak and I think that's the consistency of what good teams do. Which lineup would be tougher to get out, this one or that one? Wow. Wow. Man, you take a, a healthy Josh Hamilton, that's like watching Otani play right now. That yeah. was pretty special. Yeah. Um, I would say Leo um, hitting in the nine hole, Leo hitting in the nine hole was probably better than um, what we had hitting in the nine hole back then. But um, both lineups were just stellar of course but you know back in those world series runs we we're a little more star studded because the guys were older but yeah. um who's to say these guys here in another three years aren't going to be just as popular as uh, michael young and ian kinsler and nelson cruz david murphy josh hamilton the list goes on scoured the internet here mike maddox with us couldn't find a picture of you without a mustache when was the last time that was the case uh probably about I was about 10 months old, maybe. 
<laughs> That's our guy. <laughs> it looks so good. I'd have kept it the whole time myself. Yeah, that thing is special, man. I, I think that's the secret sauce to the mound visit. Absolutely. You just got to get that mustache a little bit close to the pitcher. makes him feel right at home and comfortable. A lot of power in that Maddox mustache. Yeah, it smells like lunch, too. <laughs> <laughs> and the soul patch as well. I mean, Absolutely. Yeah. Respect to the soul patch. I mean, the mustache is the headliner, but don't want to don't wanna disrespect the soul patch. That thing's kicking ass right now, too. Well, you're the man, Mike. Thank you so much okay. uh, for, for joining us and coming back to this team and giving hell. We'll be pulling for you. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me on.